Greetings, Bat Prince here, and today Ms. Bat and I are playing uh, Case 00, the Cannibal Boy version 102. It started without us. Yeah, <clears throat> I was trying to set it up and I couldn't be bothered redoing it. But all it is is someone climbing up the steps at the moment. I'm sure they're dead, like in that HP ah! Lovecraft. What happened? Oh, it's just a flash of Story. the person's. You know when they uh they 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 scare everybody and they don't know why and they look in the uh, mirror and they're like oh it's because I'm dead. <laughs> yeah yeah. If, if you, heard... you want to do it, go, go do it. Me do if it. you've heard of his story, you have to hurry, or else he might just come get you. Dum dum dum. Please name the protagonist. Default is Bruce. Hello. Yeah, letters Max. My name is Bruce. Go on. No, you're not going to type it in. Why is it always caps? You see how you're yelling. Yeah. The yelly work is partly based on a true story. A true story that happened to Yesterday. nobody. No. Don't whack it so hard. I whack it the hardest I want. Mm -hmm. Hey, have you guys heard of the cannibal boy? No, tell me about it. Oh, I will. Dud. Ooh. Dot, <coughs> dot, dot. Huh? Or is that you? Hmm, would have. Of course, it's the urban legend everyone's been talking about. Let me to be the main character. Perfect. Jade, James, don't you two remember why we're in Jade's room with this heavy textbook on counseling psychology? Huh? I really don't. Ah, uh, what? Why was it again? Because we need to study. We have finals tomorrow, remember? Don't tell spooky stories. You know how strict the professor can be. Do you want to fail the course? Jade, I was only studying abroad for a year. Since when did Batty become such a downer? Did he get dumped or something? Ah, uh, how should I know? Oh, come on, Batty. Tell us what's wrong. We promise we'll make fun of you together. <clears throat> So anyway, have you heard of the cannibal boy, cannibal boy or not? I have, but so what? You know the recent multiple homicides in the area? According to a friend of a friend, all of the victims saw a certain boy. Then a few days later, they were found dead in their rooms, their bodies and limbs gone, with only the heads left behind with a horrifying grimace. Even creepier, they all had human bite marks on their necks. Do you know what that means? Their heads were ripped off by a cannibal boy with his teeth. Oh, that's a boy's bite really that strong. Mm. Hey, buddy, what's wrong with you? You never question the logic of urban legend. Otherwise, it's not fun. Oh, okay. Sorry. But yeah, I've heard about it. So? Well, you know about his past. What caused him... To become a bloodthirsty man-eater. Beats me. What, are you going to do a, a case conceptualization? Or draw his genogram or something? Why not? We get to hear an interesting urban legend and get a refresher on cancelling psychology. Let James finish the story. Mm. <laughs> we love it. Ed. Part 1. The Cannibal Boy. The cannibal, boy, the cannibal boy was originally just an ordinary kid who lived happily with his dad, mum and big sister. What, but one day, his mum cheated on his dad and left the family, leaving the dad to become an alcoholic and everything changed. Whenever the dad was drunk, he did stuff to the big sister. The big sister resisted desperately at first until the dad said, If you won't play with me, I'll play with your little brother. You're his big sister, right? You decide what you want. So the <laughs> sister just stopped resisting and let the dad keep abusing her? Yeah. She wanted to be a, ma a martyr at such a young age, huh? How very admirable. Well, that's what kids are like. Kids don't know who's responsible for the things that happen. That's why some end up believing that their mother left because they were a bad kid. The big sister was exactly that type, so even though the dad's abuse got worse and worse, 
and her little brother did was uh, cry. She couldn't. She shouldered it all. How can a kid deal with that much abuse? Why wouldn't she want to run away? Because of her little brother. You don't understand. When parents don't act like parents, kids, especially ones with younger siblings, will grow up and take on the role of parents. The big sister became a mother for her brother and her dad. Besides, the way the dad abused the big sister, it's hard to say who the parent was. Yeah, like you've seen it. After every assault, the dad will lie on top of the sister, crying his eyes out. Mama, don't leave me. I hate you. Mama, I wish you'd go to hell. Wah! Ah, those kinds of feelings are the worst. I bet there was something up with that dad's mama, the cannibal boy's grandmother, right? If you keep speculating like that, the story will never end. That's why forces of pure evil in anime and comics are proper villains. You don't have to consider the background stories or anything. You can just blame them. Like Jade says, if the dad was a proper villain, the big sister would have had no problem blaming him, but sadly, he wasn't. And in addition to putting up with her dad's abuse, she had to comfort her little brother who wasn't good for anything other than to saying, I'm sorry. Don't worry, I'm fine. Fine? The sister swallowed back her tears for the whole family, tears boiled in her little body. How could she be fine? To make matters worse, even though the sister protected her little brother from physical abuse, he couldn't escape the mental abuse. Mm. Unfortunately for him, the little brother looked a lot like his mum. That's right, the mum who left themselves with some other man. He looked like his mum? Oof. Oof. You want to get bullied for being a sissy? The dad prepared for a lot of meat every meal and forced the brother to swallow it down. He wanted the brother to grow big and strong and not look so much like his mum. Even when the brother became scared of the sight of the meat and threw up whenever he ate it, the dad was relentless, shoving big chunks of meat into his mouth every day. The more the dad abused him, the more he cowered. The more he cowered, the more the dad abused him. And, like a curse, the dad's fears came true. The little brother really did get bullied for being a sissy, and his teacher turned a blind eye. His life became a living hell. That's when he started having hallucinations. He saw appari app apparitions that no one else could see, and heard voices that no one else could hear. Finally, he came to the conclusion that evil spirits were to blame for everything. If they were really human, they wouldn't be so mean to me. Dad, my teachers, my classmates, they all must be possessed. Jeez, couldn't he have asked for help? Not that simple. Who would they have asked? The useless teachers? Mm. If you tell any of your teachers, I'll kill myself and your sister. You don't want to see your dad and big sister die, do you? I know you're a good boy. As you can tell, the dad's quite the character. Jesus. He's such a drama queen. I haven't even gotten to the dramatic part yet. Don't blow your jill load so early, man. One day, the little brother came home, heavily footed as usual, and opened the door. From inside the house came a familiar smell of alcohol mixed with blood. A broken bottle, a bloody knife, the dad's face stabbed to a pulp, the sister with her wrist slashed open. Your little brother didn't have to read the suicide note on her desk to realise what had happened. <laughs> so it was too much for the big sister after all. Or maybe I should say I'm impressed that she lasted so long. <laughs> Sorry. When he picked up the bloody suicide note on the table though, what he saw was, it's your fault. It's your fault, 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 it's your fault. And in that instant, something snapped inside the little brother. My sister would never write that. She'd never write anything that would hurt me. It must have been, that's right, an evil spirit. <laughs> the little brother's brain rewrote what happened in order to protect himself. The voices he's heard and the illusions he saw served to protect the little world he shared with his sister. 
David's spirit in dad wanted to persist my sister, but she didn't want to hurt me and wanted to free dad, so she killed him and herself. But they aren't the only ones possessed by evil spirits in this world. My teachers are, my classmates are, and so many more people. If I don't do something to free all the people who are possessed, won't my dad and sisters have died in vain? There's a reason for all this suffering I had to endure. So it's my turn. My turn to exercise all the evil spirits. I just can't leave my dad and sister behind like this. Oh, I'll pack them up and take them with me. Good thing dad trained me to put lots and lots of meat in my belly. But it'll be a huge hassle for the police when they find the blood but can't figure out who the victims are. I've got to leave, the, leave them the heads at least. Yeah. Well, dang. How old was this boy? Old enough to cook his own meals. Yeah. <laughs> he could have been five. So the cannibal boy packed up his dead and de dad and sister and set out on a journey to exercise evil spirits. That's the cannibal boy's past. The cannibal boy's past. That's why only the heads of the victims are ever found. It's the last remaining shred of his uh, conscious, uh, consciousness. His conscience. Conscience. James, why is your version of the story so different from the one I heard? Huh? How does your version go? Well, when the cannibal boy was a little kid, his dad always locked him out on the balcony. He would knock at the window every night, begging his dad to let him in. Once you've heard the story, you have to tell someone who doesn't know it yet, or he'll come knocking on your window at night and beg you to let him in. As soon as you open the window, he'll bite your head off and eat your body. Hmm. Hold on a sec, Jade. So now that I've heard the story of Cannibal Boy, I have to tell somebody who d hasn't, or he'll come and eat me, is that right? Yeah. Is something wrong? James, you wasted your time telling me this story at the risk of failing the course. Don't tell me. Yep, you got me. How can I worry about failing some stupid course when I might get eaten tonight? Why, you little... Okay, I don't care in the slightest who the cannibal boy might be coming for tonight. Hey. The real problem is that you fabricated too much of that story, James. Seriously, how could you possibly know what the dad did to the cannibal boy and his sister at home? Sure, people shouldn't question the logic of an urban legend, but you just made that stuff up. That's different. It's more fun to sex it up, though. I dare you to disagree. What? Are you kidding me? I think you're confused, my dear. Are you honestly seeking the truth in an urban legend? They're practically made to be sexed up. Ah, uh, okay. The essence of an urban legend is in, is in the blending of facts and lies. The cannibal boy's past may not have been that tragic, or it could have even been more tragic. He may not actually exist, or he might really come and eat Batty tonight. That's what an urban legend is all about. What's the fun in knowing all the facts? Well, we're fine, you know that, right? Because we're right. telling this story to viewers, so we're good. If I upload it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. As an urban legend, it's bound to have some lies mixed in with the truth. Nothing is certain. But there's one thing about your version that's definitely certain. And what's that? I don't know if the dad and big sister were really possessed by evil spirits. But I'm pretty sure that it's your fault came from the sister herself. Oh, why do you think that? People who are too scared to stand up to bullies shift the blame onto people who are nicer than themselves. So they bully nice people and cower from the bad people, which means everyone who gets bullied by some bad person. That's not the work of any evil spirit. They're all just so-called nice people. Mm -hmm. Part 1. Achievement Unlocked the cannibal boy. I like and that there story. There we have it, the intro to the thing. And um, I was going to call it there, right? Mm. But there's two more achievements in the game. Yeah. And the game yeah. works if you do this. Now put your finger back. How long do I have to stay like this? Forever. Forever until. It should only take 15 minutes to get through. 15. The whole thing, which we've already done okay. in the first chapter, so maybe 10. Yep. 
Why not just record? Um, evil spirits are to blame for everything. It's my turn. Yeah, we'll just. Watch Anyone it as can turn into an evil spirit. Oh, come on. I guess after the intro. I really, really like that story. Then it should story. force forward. Yeah, oh, he yeah. just ate them, put them in his belly. Well, yeah, because... I put them in my belly. Like, when you've seen dead people and be traumatized so much throughout your life, like, why wouldn't you? Yeah, I know. Like, I'm hungry. Oh, so it's just going right through it over and over and over again. No, 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 no. It's the next part. But hold on. Let me just uh, config. No, no, that, that's it. Uh, it's just gonna have to no, if you just hold it for the next 10 minutes it's, you know, it's just gonna fast forward through it that's all so we'll have to make our our own story because we're not going to be able to keep up with what the, so uh, i'm not going to read the rest of the urban legends they're saying uh it'll take a long time did we get the second achievement just then no no i yet. don't think so not until the story's over it's about twins there's three achievements in this and uh, so it's each part then i think so yeah yeah so we, no we're not going to watch the next one because the next a, a thing is it's gonna be like 20 minutes long and then the one after that's gonna be 20 minutes long unless you want to sit here all night and read it that's the problem with these these visual novels a lot of the time you can't just like get it. yeah you can get a lot of it just by i uh, want to re-watch this speed read it no pay attention i have it's about twins and doppelgangers yeah like that drew barrymore film yeah, yeah. <laughs> no you say yep yep like it's like everyone knows all. that nobody else has seen that except it for is us. so it's good over. it's a good film that's done very well. No, I really enjoyed that story. Okay. It was good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Go on, try and read things as it goes by. You can't catch on anything? It's not your fault. I can't say exactly. No, someone fell in love with and I think her brother's going to get really jealous. Yeah, try and, uh, uh, what do you call it? compress it for us tell us what the story is as it goes one of them is a telepath jeez Hi. you're welcome yeah it might even I think go. it's like one of those stories where um <gasps> blood the twins, you know, one gets jealous of the other and wants to be with them forever. The right twin is always the bad twin, right? No, but yeah. Or is it the left twin? I have no idea. It's all yeah, your fault. fault. <gasps> he swore. It's okay, it had asterisks, so even though we know the yeah. word, apparently it's okay. I think I need to study criminal psychology and such. Oh yeah? It always fascinated me and like in high school I was never told about other jobs that you could do except for all the normal ones like uh, retail, floristry, all that sort of stuff I never knew for yeah. some reason. I like it how you say floristry is a normal job. It's just what they gave you at your stupid freaking Catholic school. It's well, not really just not that, a it was one job. of the ones that, yeah, I was actually had to do work experience at. If I said to you off the top of your head Go to a florist mm. in your mind right mm. now in mm. your mind palace of jo of where we live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to a florist. Where would you go? Oh, there's so many. But do you, yeah, you can say that. But where? In town, out near my mom's. So next you, door to you my mom's. You actually can. Yes. I can't. Oh. I know that I'm I'm like like sexist in the way that like I I'm not I, I don't care. Mm. But like. I wouldn't know where to go to a florist unless I Good, asked. because I don't want any flowers. I know, but like, unless I... But even so, a florist is one of those things. We used to have one in the village here. Oh, and, really? and, I, and I would always look at it because it was pretty to see all the flowers. And the smell. So it's, but and the, and the smell. But the thing is, I, I would know if I walked past one every day. Hmm. I would know if I walked past one once a week, once a month. Yeah. It's not a normal job to the but point God, where I, so can't, I can't remember where any are. Yeah. It's, I mean, but um, it's not exactly a, a very uh, profitable organization. No, I it's mean, not. the the stock dies, and you don't need it all the time. Like, you can only sell it on like special occasions, and then you have to keep some stuff for like birthdays, just in case somebody decides to give you some money. It's, and then you have to have all the cool rooms. And I mean, seriously, it's it's not it's exactly really... profitable. It's not a regular job. But every time you you tell this story about regular jobs, you always bring up florists. Well, that's because I did it. 
that's the only reason but anyway my point is i never knew the array of jobs that you could have like maybe in the back of my mind i did but it never came forward and i was never taught about it and it's just so upsetting you know because i could have had such a big range and i was so much into criminal um forensics and everything like that i just never knew i could do as a job so all old ladies but yeah you know <laughs> You know why you weren't told about these things? Because of the school I went to? Not just because of the school you went to. It's not just because you went to a stupid religious school. Because it's hard school. to get into? It's more, yeah, and the point uh, about it is... That they that want this, us to be more successful. The school wants to say, tick, 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 yeah. tick, tick, tick. These are the students that have gotten into their preferred professions. Mm. And they can they can tick it off and they can show all their investors the people that give them money every year for new sports equipment and yeah whatever else they want to they want to show it especially in the um in the ways of like a private school who deliberately goes out because yours was private yeah and the whole catholic system is private yes. they, they deliberately go out and get people to fund them not just you know a regular payment from the government no and no they, no they, they specifically to... ask for um you can take off your hand now it was fast forwarding um but like when they ask for funding they specifically go out and say um here is our success stories well yeah but they specifically do it to uh students that uh finished high school mm. and to the parents where their kids have finished high school it is mm -hmm. so freaking weird i get letters still going um we're building a new building uh please you know raise money to for uh, we want to raise money for it please donate and you're like yeah. Are you freaking kidding me? You know how much money my parents spent on sending me to that school? I shouldn't have to fork out anything and my parents shouldn't have to. What the hell? Yeah, but the thing is... And if... I know some people that still do it even though their daughters aren't there anymore. But the thing is, if they had have pushed you into a field, right? Yeah. And you became successful in that field that they thought you could have been successful in. Yeah. Then you would have got that letter and went, I have a few extra dollars and I did good at that school. Oh, well, that's like a couple of girls from my school. They actually did get into like our neighbors or something. And they yes. were sent from the letters going, this girl is so successful from our school. That's that, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. They're trying to get those success stories. That's why they yeah. don't push you in. They don't tell you about all these fringe things that you could go to study and then maybe fail. Yeah, exactly. They, they're trying to get you into the normal things that could do stuff. Well, do you a think bunch that's of right? No, it's absolutely no. not right. But anyway... We just watched The Cannibal Boy. We fast-forwarded through the last Sorry, two chapters. Sorry, we went off a tangent. But uh, I and you was liked the talking. First one. Yeah, I loved the first one. And that's what got me onto the tangent because I would have loved to be a psychologist or whatever. But anyway, it was great. Anyway, thank you. Th thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the game developer. To, for making the game. That was great. Yes. See you, kitty, sometime <laughs> later. Night-night.